All right, it's Lib Thames here. We're back with part three of the video lecture, Is Love a Chemical Reaction? We're here to answer the question. Second video, we got to the point where we concluded with fact one of life from a human point of view is that a human being is a molecule, or more specifically, a 26 element molecule attached to substrate. Now, there, we're not going to get into a lot of the philosophical implications and technical de details of this point of view, but uh, in terms of perspective of this issue, English physicist Jim Edeon has been running a poll since over the last 60 years on the question, do you believe you are a giant molecule? Let's take a look at those results. So there we see the poll results from English physicist Jim Edeon, who's been running a poll over the last six or seven years. The updated results show that according to the votes of 321 people, 57% agree that they are a giant molecule. Can't really get into the details of the human molecule topics like free will and choice, reactivity, bonding. Those are a little advanced for this video. But a good place to start is the Google Molecular Evolution Table. Or you can go to uh, eoht.info and search in that search box, you'll get a new article. They show the evolution uh, and formation of the human molecule over the last 13.7 billion years from hydrogen atoms at the early formation stages of the universe to human molecules in, at present day. To review, uh, fact number one, human being is a 26 element molecule. Fact number two, if we reference the 2004 Essential Dictionary of Science, a chemical reaction is defined as the coming together or interaction of two or more atoms, ions, or molecules with the result that a chemical change takes place and a new substance is formed. So the translation of the definition for the human case would be that a human chemical reaction is the coming together or interaction of two or more human molecules with the result that a chemical change takes place and a new substance is formed. The substance in this case being the union of two human molecules in a relationship or marriage, the technical term of which would be a dihumanoid molecule. Hence, in the conclusion of our three-part video series, if we add together fact one with fact two, that firstly, a person is a molecule, that secondly, a chemical reaction is the uh, reaction between human molecules, such as in the formation of a marriage couple, we arrive at the result which is, which concludes that love is a purely chemical reaction uh, by definition. It's an inarguable fact. And now we've uh, skipped over a lot of information in these last three videos. But one key point to touch on before we leave is that Gota defined human relationships in terms of elective affinities. Now, in 1882, German physician and physicist Hermann von Helmholtz showed that to measure, the only way to measure the affinities between reactants is by measuring what's called the free energy of the reaction. It's a complicated term, but it loosely means that it's the amount of energy that the system gives out that can be used to do external work, such as a light a light bulb or power an engine. So after 1882, and over the next few de decades, the word affinity was slowly re replaced with free energy. So in modern terms, human chemistry is all about uh, the understanding and science of free energies of human relationships, which is a very difficult subject. It's addressed a lot in the two-volume series, uh, Human Chemistry. Almost the whole second volume is a focus on free energies. For more information on the history of the development of the idea of love as a chemical reaction, the reader is encouraged to go to the online Encyclopedia of Human Thermodynamics, 
that's uh, eoht.info, keyword search in the search box, love the chemical reaction, and you'll find a nice a three-page article on the history of the concept. I wrote this a few days ago. It has 18 references.